Nowadays, I use the Vinci Resolve more often than Adobe Premiere Pro for my video editing because... Wait, wait. Before that, I have to share why I was skeptical about switching my NLE in the first place. I have been using Adobe Premiere Pro from the first day of my video editing journey since 2016. Premiere Pro has been my own and only companion. I have edited thousands of videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. I saw everyone is switching to DaVinci Resolve, but I was really scared of node-based video editing process. And you know, learning new things was never fun for me. But one day, I removed Adobe Premiere Pro from my Mac and determined that I had to edit this project in the Vinci Resolve. And guess what? There are so much frustration. Literally, I was searching for how to cut a clip in Resolve, how to disable nodes, how to EQ an audio, how to color grid, blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, it was worth it. So today, I'll share the features I like the most in Resolve over Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's start with the basic. Resolve doesn't make individual projects like Adobe Premiere Pro. Rather, it keeps all the projects inside a database and they call it project library. So whenever you open Resolve, it will show the previous project that you have worked on and making new project pretty easy. Just click on the new project and name it. That's it. You don't need to select the project location every single time. Just like that, we need to be very efficient when we edit. I'd like to thank Motion Array for sponsoring this portion of this video. Here you have seen I have used cool looking titles, lower thirds, transitions and stock footages. I got it all from Motion Array. No matter which application you use, what you need. Stock footages, photos, video templates, preset, music, sound effect, graphics and plugins. It covers everything. Also the quality of assets are top notch and they are adding new assets every single day. I love the fact that I don't need to go to different websites for my video assets. I'm getting everything in one place which is www.motionarray.com. For your personal or business use, I'll highly recommend their affordable subscription. If you buy their annual subscription, you'll get $50 discount. Click the first link in the description to get more details. Next one is importing file into projects. Premiere Pro has a very laggy importing interface. It takes forever to import 20 or more video files simultaneously. For Resolve, it is very smooth and fast. In the beginning, I was really struggling to search the different panels in the Resolve. Indeed, Premiere Pro will give you more flexibility in terms of customization. You can organize the panels as you like in Adobe Premiere Pro. For Resolve, you have very minimal customization option. It will take some time to get used to it, but eventually it works. Everything is there where it should be. I don't think that is a big deal. Controlling timeline will give you a headache when you start using the result for the first time. In Adobe Premiere Pro, when trimming clips, you need to play back the timeline, right? But once you grab the playhead, it will stop there. Then you can modify whatever you want. But in Resolve, in the middle of a playback, if you grab the playhead, it will not stop there. But once you release the playhead, it will continue playing back. You have to press the space bar again and again to start playing and stop playing. I believe if you are coming from Adobe Premiere Pro, then it will take some time to get used to with it. But once you do, you will enjoy it. Dynamic zoom is one of my favorite feature in the Vinci Resolve. I don't know why Adobe is not including this life-saving feature in Adobe Premiere Pro. No keyframe, no adjustment, no nothing. Just set the starting frame and then ending frame, that's it. It will zoom in automatically. You can swap zooming in to zooming out just by clicking one simple swap button, that's it. So I think Adobe should include this feature in Adobe Premiere Pro 2. If you want to have more customization, then you can install a free plugin named Magic Zoom. Now take an adjustment clip and drag the Magic Zoom effect on top of it. Voila, you will get a cool looking zoom in effect like this one. There are so many options to modify. I have a separate video on it. If you want, you can check out the video from here. Performance is an area in which the Resolve dominates. The Venzi Resolve has wonderful smooth playback and incredibly fast export time that keep pace with programs such as Final Cut Pro. Adobe isn't as strong in this regard. Premiere Pro performance can be very shaky sometimes and has been notorious for bugs and crashes. 
Resolve experience is very smooth. It crashed once while I was working, but it didn't lose anything. The life-saving feature works like a charm. Now the strong point, the Vinci Resolve is well known for its color correction and color grading capabilities. Most of the Hollywood film productions use Resolve to color grade their films. It will take some time to master the node-based color grading process. However, doing the basic correction and grading is very easy to learn. Once you dive into the Resolve color page, a new world will open for you to learn and experiment. And trust me, it will not disappoint you. Lastly, I would say, if you are very new to video editing, DaVinci Resolve will be a perfect choice for you. You can download and start using it for free as long as you want. They have a paid version too named DaVinci Resolve Studio. For one-time payment of $300, you can buy it and use it forever. There you will get harder acceleration support and some effects that only available in the studio version. On the other hand, Adobe Premiere Pro subscription is very expensive, especially for the beginners. And sadly, you cannot buy the Premiere Pro for life. Time. Now what is my thought? Maybe in a vacuum where nothing else exists and only video editing matters, then yeah, the Vinci result probably beats Adobe Premiere Pro when it comes to the editing experience. I still have a lots of small problem inside the Vinci result that makes me go mad sometimes. But if those would not be there, it's probably the better experience to edit with. But we are not living in such a world. After Effects, Photoshop and Illustrator are without a doubt the king of their respective categories. Are they the best programs in their categories? No, probably not. But that doesn't make them any less used. Photoshop is even now a verb. Premiere Pro is undoubtedly the number one in advertisement, corporate and social media because the clones are not even comparable to the other Adobe programs. Fusion has maybe 20% of motion design capabilities right now and even then you cannot put Photoshop and Illustrator files into Fusion like you can do in Adobe After Effects. The dynamic links, connection, templates, plugins and community beats everything else and it's not even close. I have to go back to Premiere Pro for the serious project I do because I do not want to deal with troubles and troubleshooting when I am doing the work. I am very confident with Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. The AI features Adobe has included over the time will give you a better experience. On the other hand, I enjoy working in the result for a smaller project where I do not need to do complex edits. So the conclusion is I am not switching to the Vinci result completely yet. Let's see what the future brings. So that's it. That is all for today. I hope you have liked this video. If you have liked this video and learned something new from this one, then you can give me a thumbs up. If you know this channel, want to learn Adobe Premiere Pro video editing or the Vinci result or filmmaking, you can subscribe to this channel to get more awesome videos just like this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, goodbye.